normally when my experiments fail, I don't bother to post the video. But this one might have some value in that uh, you may change your mind about trying this or, or not. But uh, we're going to go ahead and show you the video anyway. It was educational for me. And maybe, uh, maybe somebody's got an answer that would uh, help make the situation actually work. If so, I'd really like to know about it. I just removed the chuck from my lathe to clean out any chips that might be in it when I noticed something. There's a chamfer on here, right there, that looks really nice, like perhaps it was ground, which would make it rather precision, I would think, if it were ground. So checking the other end of that shaft, which is the spindle actually, I see that the other end also has a very nice finish on it. I don't know if you can see that in the in the picture here, but it looks like it was ground too. Now maybe it wasn't ground, but it sure looks nice and accurately done. And that put a thought in my head that perhaps I can take an R8 collet like this and put it in here and have that chamfer center it very nicely for me. And if I come up with a way to do this, it's easy enough to check to see what kind of runout I have. So that is this morning's project. We're going to create a drawbar for that and tighten it up, put a dowel in it, check the runout on that. Got our R8 collet installed on that end and we've turned it in a a few turns of thread have been used on that and over here I've marked where this distance is right to this face and we're going to need to put something on here to draw up against when we tighten the collet. I need to know how far it is in here to where the taper ends so I took a flashlight and measured in here uh, to find the end of the taper and that was about two and a half inches. So you'll find out why I want to know that when we continue here. I've taken this piece of half inch round stock and it is about a foot long from one end to the other and I have put some 7 sixteenths 20 thread on the end of it. Now the length of that thread, let's see if we can just roughly check what that is. There's about an inch of thread on here. And I'm going to put that through that uh, spindle hole. And at this end, of course, what's going to happen is when I put it in there, it's going to sit on the bottom. And it's going to make it difficult to put the R8 collet on there. So I need some support at this end to kind of hold it near the middle so it'll be easier to thread that collet on. And I don't want to go into the section that has the, uh, the taper, the Morse taper on it. I, I don't want to damage it. So I'm going to put something back here, a larger piece on here that kind of holds things in the center without getting near that Morse taper area. This lathe has a one inch spindle bore and it actually measures about one inch and 51 or two thousandths. So we're trying to get this just a little bit smaller than the spindle bore. I'm going to take that down to just below one inch and 50 thousandths and that should slide into that spindle bore uh, okay. So we'll just uh, take it down a little bit more and then we can drill a half inch hole in here.
want a half inch hole in the center of this. So we're going to start out with a 31 64th drill, 64th less than the half inch. That way that will avoid being oversized when we drill with the actual half inch drill. That works for anything. You can just about eliminate any oversized problems by doing that. Well, after going out of my way to make sure that I didn't drill that hole oversize, I drilled it oversize anyway. So it was a little big and kind of a little bit sloppy on the shaft. So I took and uh, knurled the shaft in the position where this is going to go. The knurl made this shaft 11 thou larger and now it, it's not super tight but at least there's not any slop in it. And we've taken this and uh, put a 1024 set screw in this so we can lock it up on top of that knurl. Oh, by the way, the reason we screwed that up was this drill here is actually the smaller drill and it was in the index in the half inch slot whereas the half inch drill, which is this drill, actually fit in that smaller hole. So it actually goes here and that actually goes there. And we got to watch that doesn't happen. I guess the tip off is that this one's a little bit longer. Before I went any further, I wanted to make sure that this actually did go all the way in well. It only went about that far in. So I put this bar back in the chuck right here and, and just turned this down while it was on the bar. And now it seems to go back in pretty well as far as I want. There we go. So if that happens, uh, it looks like the this is really rough in here. It's been very poor finish, so maybe uh, towards the center uh, it's a little bit tighter. But it wasn't a problem. Well, the next step is to find something that fits on this end to that mark which we saw in the beginning of the video. And I looked through my junk box and I got lucky. I found this. This is a half inch hole and fits nicely onto the bar. And this step here was already on here and I only had to turn it down a little bit so that it would fit in the end. Now what I need to do with this is put a 60 degrees on here to match this 60 degrees on here. And that way it should center itself when it draws in. I'm picking up that angle for that uh, 60 degree included uh, center. And uh, I'm cheating a little bit. I know this is the right angle so I've just come in, come in here and set up my tool to uh, reflect the right angle here. And we're going to see how that works. Put the R8 collet in here. And I push this in, then I slid the, uh, the brass part on. And while I held the R8 collet in with my right hand, with my left hand, I took a scriber and I marked a, a line right here so I know where to install this brass part. Just turning this to draw in the collet might work. Oh, maybe maybe if I had a knurl on it, it would work better. But just in case this doesn't get tight enough, I'm going to put a hex on here for a wrench. Uh, this is a half inch, so coming down to the nearest size, the uh, nearest largest size would be 7 sixteenths. And I'm, I'm going to do that right now. We'll put that on before we assemble this to the shaft. I've drilled the hole for the quarter 20 thread. Now we're going to tap that in 
and that will be for the set screw that holds this in place. Just milled a flat in there for the set screw on this to lock into. I've gone about 30 thou deep. Uh, if that's not going to do the job. We'll go a little deeper after, but I think it's going to work just fine. Okay, I've got a 5 8 collet and a 5 8 dowel in here. And this is not as good as I expected. I'm going to start turning this. We're at zero on the indicator. This is a one thou indicator. There's two thou, three thou, back around to zero, four thou, four thou run out. Well, I could probably do better than that with a chuck. But while I'm here, I'm going to see just what run out is on the Morse taper that's inside here. We'll check that out with an indicator and see if that is any part of the problem or not. We've got the indicator needle right on the chamfer surface. I'll turn the light on, see if it makes it better or worse. You can see now that it's right on that chamfer surface. And I think we'll have to turn the light out so we can see the indicator better. And uh, we're pretty close to, well, we're just past the zero mark. Let's see if we can turn it a little bit, see where we go here. There's zero. Each graduation is five tenths on this. So it looks like about, I don't know, two thou maybe. It's hard to do this and see what I'm doing with the. We're not getting repeatability. Ah, there we go. There might be some dirt on that. Clean that a little bit and we'll take another shot here. Okay, we cleaned the dirt off of that. I ah, see I'm doing that with my hand here. The whole tool post is moving. Let me tighten this up. Okay, we've got the tool post tight. Got the dirt off and let's see what we got now. We're pretty close to zero here. So that seems to be thou and a half, two thou, a couple of thousands anyway. Kind of interesting. I put a Morse taper sleeve in here and I'm looking at the indicator and turning this and we're looking at a couple of thousands run out on this too almost thousand and a half to two thousand on the inside not on the chamfer but on the inside of the morse taper we're looking at a couple of thousands there so now i'm thinking that even if i made an adapter that had a morse taper sleeve that fit in here. By the time I got the errors added up between the adapter and by that time we're sticking out quite a ways, that's going to make more error, that this is really not worthwhile. It's not a good idea. If anybody's tried to do this and got it to work, I'd really like to know how they did it.